Welcome to lesson 2.2.1 and this particular lesson has to do with transformations. We spent a lot of time working on transformations for quadratics but this is going to work on transformations for five other uh, functions and so each one of those we're going to start with the parent function and so you see right here I have plugged in and I'm kind of letting that cat out of the bag ahead of time um, if I was in class, you'd be in groups and you'd be discovering this and figuring out how to do this with each of the equations. But since I'm actually just teaching this, uh, we're going to start with giving you the graphing form of the equation, which is very similar to the quadratic form that we used in the other lesson. So, But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all these on Desmos, and we're going to talk about all the questions that need to be answered for each of the functions. And then, and then we'll move on. So this first one is the cubic function. And you will see here that I have y equals x to the third as the parent function. And I have that drawn here, okay? Now, I also have y equals a times x minus h to the third plus k. And this is the only, the only difference in this one is if I was to change this, it would look just like our quadratic. And that's the orange right here, okay? So, but we're working with a cubic. So I'm gonna change that back to the third. And so as you see here, this is the parent function, means it meets at the or point of origin, and it moves, it will move all over based on A, X, and H. A will affect whether it's a vertical stretch or a compression. So if I go higher than one, you'll see what happens. The orange becomes skinnier, okay, and vertical stretches. Now if I go less than one, so if I go into the fraction, Okay, so I'm gonna go less than one now, it will compress it. So you'll see what's happening as it gets closer and closer to one. Now, you see what I did there. If I'm at zero, it's a horizontal line, which makes sense, but if I am negative and, and less than the absolute value of one, which all the way to negative one, it's a compression. But if I go greater, again, it's a vertical stretch. Okay, so I'm gonna take this back to one, because obviously if it was zero, like it is right, there we would have a horizontal line so that's not what we want so we're going to take it back to one okay and so that matches up with the parent function that we have here in blue okay now what we're going to do is we're going to do some horizontal shifts and i'm going to take it and i'm going to go to the right by doing using positive so there's your horizontal so as it goes greater than zero i move to the right and as I go left of zero, it's uh, negative, okay? And then I'm gonna get that back to zero, and then just, oops, sort of, let's see here. All right, then I have a k equals zero, so that's our vertical. And so if I go greater than one, it moves up. If I go less than one, it moves down, okay? And that's how, that's how all of those various letters affect it. Now the difference here is, if you notice this is x minus h, and we're going to come down here where there's a horizontal shift to the right. This says x minus 4. So when you first look at it, you might think, oh, it's going to go 4 to the left. No, it will go 4 to the right. And I will show you what that looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and unmute the, uh, unmute the equation, hopefully. And you'll notice that we have a shift of 4 to the right. Okay, and that is x minus 4. So I'm going to mute that one again. Then I'm going to come down and we're going to explore a couple of the others. This is a horizontal shift to the left, and that's because we put a negative 4 in. So negative, negative 4 becomes a positive, but it switches to the left. So you can see what it's done there. Instead of the point of origin, it's at negative 4, 0. Okay, so I'm going to mute that. Then we're going to do a vertical translation. Now this is interesting because a lot of people think, oh, my, this is a horizontal translation. No, if there's no parentheses, that means this is essentially like saying, so let's come down here and let's give it parentheses. This is like saying x minus zero to the third, okay? So when there is nothing there and it's just x to the third, it means the translation is actually the vertical. So we're gonna go ahead and unmute that and you'll see that it has moved up to, okay? And then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna do a vertical shift down. And that's, that's going to be, if it comes to life here, minus 2, okay? And so that shows you how each one is individually, okay? Now what we're going to go, and I'm keeping the parent function there because it helps you see how things shift. Now we have four 
different equations to finish off the discussion about the cubic equation. All right, so here is y equals x to the third minus 2. So this is a shift down. I think I showed you that already. Yep. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do multiple things. So this will be a shift to the right 2 and up 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's to the right 2 and up 2. Okay. That's how a horizontal and a vertical. This will be a vertical stretch because we have an a that is 2, so it's greater than 1, so it's going to be a stretch. Horizontal to the right 2 and up 2. So all of those things will happen. Okay. So this is skinnier, so it's a vertical stretch, but it's still over 2, up 2. Okay. Now we're going to have a compression. Okay. And that's the 0.5. It's less than 1, greater than 0, so it's a fraction. So it's going to compress it. And that's going to still go to the right 2 and up 2. Okay, so you see that it's still gone up to a right to and up to, but it's a little flatter. It's a vertical compression. It's been compressed from uh, from positive infinity. Okay, all right. So that covers all of the equations. So let's go ahead and do all of these together, so you can see how they've impacted based on that original. And one more. Okay. And then we've got all of these. So these are all showing all of the different graphs that we've done with the parent function in the middle. Okay. Now we'll get rid of anything that just has one thing going on. And you'll see what happens with it's a two to the right and two up with vertical stretches and compressions. So hopefully that helps. Now let's talk about the domain and range of this particular function. The domain, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type it. The domain is domain is all real numbers. Okay, and then we're going to come down here. Well, we'll just stay in the same one. And range is also all real numbers. And you can see that there's no asymptotes. These will gradually hit everything uh, on the x from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is a little more obvious because it's going from negative infinity to positive infinity as well. And that ends our discussion of the cubic function. OK, so we just talked about the cubic function. So a lot of what happened on the cubic function is very similar to what's going to happen on the other four functions that we discuss. But I'm going to go through all of them on Desmos for you, and then you can just kind of keep looking back and forth at the video if you would like. Um, I felt like this was a very helpful exercise in just being able to see what the parent function looks like, along with the translations that actually happen. And I know in class you would typically do this on a poster, but watching me graph this by hand on a video would bore you to death. So it's way better that I have technology to help me with this. So. This is the reciprocal function, and also some people call it an inverse linear function, because linear would be y equals x, and we're doing the inverse of it. So, um, But it's also reciprocal function. And so what we're going to do is we have the parent function here in uh, y equals 1 over x. Now, if you notice here, my x-axis is currently green, and that's because I have my, zero, my a as a 0. So I'm going to take it back up to 1, and you'll see that it ends up being, uh, coincides with the parent function. So right now we have everything set on these um, sliders to show that it equals the parent function, okay? And then we're gonna change things so you can see how the, the parent function changes when we do horizontal and vertical shifts. So if I change A um, and I make it go greater, we're gonna have vertical stretches. Remember, if A is greater than one, it's a vertical stretch. Okay, and then if I go between 0 and 1, I'm going to have a compression. And you'll see that because it lowers, okay? And then if I hit negative, it totally flips quadrants, okay? It's reflections, okay? So that is what A does in that particular thing. And actually, if you have, oh, let's see here. Let's just do it. I kind of think it's fun when we play with these sliders and if you let them go. But if we pause it, then we can control where it goes, okay? So I'm going to put it back at 1 because that's where it equals the parent function, okay? Now, horizontal shift. Again, if I'm going to the right, I'm going to change the h and it's going to move to the right. And you can see the whole graph just shifts. And if I go to the left, 
my H is negative, so it's moving to the left, okay? All right, let's get that back to zero. So we have no horizontal shift right now. Now let's do the vertical. And this again will go up and down, positive and negative. And so let's just move this slider so you can see it going up. And then as your value changes, you go down and you'll see that it's doing a vertical shift down because it's negative. All right, let's get it back to zero again. All right, now I have muted. I'm going to go ahead and leave those equations where they are, but I have a bunch of them muted. So this one is going to be a horizontal shift to the right because remember our X minus H at the top, we're putting a positive in, so that means it has to be going to the right. So let's take a look at the parent function and a horizontal shift to the right too. Okay, that's what would happen. So you see how it's at one here? Now it's at three, okay? You'll also notice on these, they have a vertical and horizontal asymptotes. If it's on the parent function only, which is what we're talking about, you're going to see down at the bottom, and we'll talk about it more to the end, but the domain is all real numbers except zero. So you notice how it's never going to hit um, the x-axis or the y-axis. So our y values all real numbers except zero as well. And we have, uh, for the parent function, our y-axis and our x-axis are our asymptotes. And remember, asymptotes means we've got points gradually approaching, and in this case, zero, and it's going to get infinitesimally closer and closer to zero, but it's never actually going to hit it. And you can examine that farther, too, with tables. So that helps as well. But let's go back up to where we were. So we did a horizontal shift to the right, too. Now we're going to show you to the left, too, because of x plus 2. Okay, notice how it's moved over there, okay? All right, and then I'm changing that color to red because it's kind of confusing. So our green is the parent function, and our red is the shift to the left, okay? Now, let me go ahead and mute that. Now we're going to do a vertical shift. So this is where, again, you could get confused. But remember, the x minus h is in the denominator, and then it's plus 2. So this is going to be a vertical shift up of the parent function. All right, ooh, I want to change colors there too. Sorry, I just like to play with the technology while we're doing this as well. It's kind of fun. Um, I just loved how far technology has come and how much you can do with uh, Desmos to illustrate concepts and then the TI emulator software that I also use occasionally. It's kind of nice. So, um, But let's go ahead. That's That shows the vertical shift up of two. Now let's show you a vertical shift down two. Notice it's come down here below. Again, here's the parent function. Here's the vertical shift down. Now we're going to go to where it's a vertical shift to the right two and up to, kind of like we did on the cubic function. Look at that. It's kind of interesting. It's actually not to the right. I'm sorry. It's to the left. I left it as x plus 2, so that means we're going to the left 2 and up 2. Okay. Now, if I want a vertical stretch of that, it's going to be, notice how my a has changed here. So it's the same as the equation above it, but now it's going to be 2. It's going to be done with a vertical stretch of 2. Notice how it's skinnier. It's, it's stretching towards infinity. Okay. So that's what that looks like. Now let's put it next to that. Let's mute the blue for a second. And again, it's based off this black graph right here, which we have right here. And we're going to go ahead and see what a vertical compression looks like. If I can get it to show up. Okay, come on. All right, there you go. Notice how the green went in and let's change that color again, because that can be confusing. Um, let's make it orange. Okay. This is the vertical compression, and you notice that it's it's uh, smashing down from um, infinity. Okay, so that is that is your vertical and horizontal with a compression. Okay, and then if I put all three together, you can see how this is a vertical stretch. And let's bring it down here so you can see it more. This is the the function we had where it was just a horizontal and a uh, vertical change. This is the translation, the vertical stretch. I'm sorry, not translation, vertical stretch. This, as you can see, it's kind of smashed down from infinity. That is your vertical compression. So hopefully that helps. So this covers all of it. And we've already talked about the domain and range, how they're all real numbers except zero, and that both of the x and y axis are asymptotes for the parent function. Needless to say, if you were moving, like this particular function would have an asymptote at y equals negative 2 and also at x equals 2. So it changes based on the translations as well. That's why I gave you the um, asymptotes as of the parent function. All right, so let's go back. And now we're going to move on to another function. 
But once again, let's just touch base on the fact that this is the parent function for the reciprocal. This is the graphing form that helps you with it, okay? And that's it for that particular function. Okay, so this is the square root function, and I'm going to go a little quicker through this than I did the last couple because it's kind of getting redundant. It's a lot of the same patterns. You're going to see that this is very similar to all of them, and you'll get used to it. But right now I have y equals the square root of x. You'll see that as um, it's green right now, but it's going to be, you're going to see the parent function stays blue as I play with uh, these letters. But here's the graphing form, y equals a, square root of x minus h, and k. So a is the vertical stretch and vertical compression determiner. And then h is uh, determining whether we're going to the right or the left, that's horizontal, and k is our vertical. Right now we are at a equals 1. I'm going to have a vertical stretch if I go greater than 1. So this is what that would look like. Okay, now I'm going to go back to 1. All right, and if I go less than 1, it's going to be a fraction. Okay, and again, this is playing with me. All right, so here I am less than 1. And if you see it goes to a vertical compression, now what happens if I hit 0? It is a horizontal line. Okay, now, but when I go negative, then I start to look like I have another parabola, a horizontal parabola. But that, you'll also notice there's two different equations now because this would be a negative. So the parent function stays where it is, and then this moves down. So now at a negative 1, it looks like a horizontal parabola. But we don't have horizontal parabolas that are functions. Um, we would if it was a conic. So anyway, let's go put it back to 1. If I can get it back to 1 without bringing up that lovely box that dialog box. Okay. All right. Now we're going to show what it looks like to move right and left. Okay. This is just the X underneath. So if I move to the right four, I have that. If I move to the left four, I have it right about there. Okay. That is the horizontal change. So let's get it back to zero so we can check out the vertical. Okay. Here's the vertical. It goes up and then it goes down. Okay. Let's get it back at zero so there's no switch. All right, now I'm going to go through these other equations. These are all equations with the variations we've been looking at. X, this is horizontal to the right. Okay, there's to the right too. And then there's, I'm going to mute that, and then this is to the left too. Okay, this is a vertical. Remember, if it's vertical, it's not going to be under the radical. It's very similar to what we did in the other equations. So this is going up to. okay? This will go down to. It's a vertical shift down. Okay. This does a two to the left and two up. So here we go. Two to the left and two up. So see this? Two to the left, two up. All right. This is with a vertical stretch of, so I'm going to leave this one so you can see the difference. This is a vertical stretch because A is greater than one and it's going to go to the left, two up, two. So it still starts at it, but you can see it's doing a vertical stretch towards uh, positive infinity. All right, then let's look at what the compression looks like. Let's add that in. It's going to be less than, okay? See how it's 0.5? It is compressing downward from infinity. Okay, so that shows you those three with the, the stretches and the compressions. All right, let's mute all of those. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is the domain and range. Domain and range are the same for both. They both start at the point of origin for the parent function, and they both go off to positive infinity. So from x to positive infinity, it's, I mean, x is greater than or equal to 0, and same with the y, greater than or equal to 0, and there are no asymptotes in this equation. Okay, that stops this. That's the square root, and now we're going to move on to absolute value, which is very similar to a parabola as far as domain and range. Okay, let's, let's uh, pause this for a moment. Okay, so we have finished three of the functions, and so this is our fourth one. This is the absolute value function. And a lot of the same similarities that you have with your quadratic function, like domain and range and the way the behavior looks, are very similar. The only difference is we have a V here on absolute value as where we have a parabola with our quadratic. But here's the parent function for Y equals the square, or the absolute value of X. Then if we go ahead and bring in our A and our X minus H plus K, we again have our A, which determines vertical stretches and compressions. We have our H, which is horizontal, and our K, which is vertical. So let's just play with these a little bit, with the parent function being there as well. 
If I go greater than one, I will have a vertical stretch. If I go less than one, but greater than zero, I will have a uh, vertical compression. If I go negative, then, which I hate to go negative, I'm a very positive person. <laughs> anyway, um, and if I have a negative A, it takes me down below uh, at the point of origin, so it points down to the third and fourth quadrant, and that's similar to what a parabola does. So let's take this back up to one, if I can get there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and look at the different equations that we have here that are in conjunction, or as that are translated based on the parent function. So let's look at this first one, which will be a, ver a horizontal shift to the right. Okay, you can see how that's to the right. This one down below, we will uh, unmute that, and it is to the left. It's kind of pretty though, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, all right. So uh, those are horizontal translations, two to the right, two to the left. Okay, now I'm gonna mute those, and we're gonna do vertical. Okay, this is a vertical a translation up, this is a vertical translation down. Again, very pretty, because I have all different colors on the graph. I hope you're enjoying that. Okay, I wonder what it would look like with all of them. Let's just put them all in here. Oh my goodness, I think that's just so pretty. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, let's move down to where we have a horizontal and a vertical translation, and then a vertical stretch and a vertical compression. So let's just hit all of those. There's your, so I'm gonna mute the parent function just for a moment. Okay, there's your uh, horizontal shift left to and up to, but then we bring in what's a vertical stretch look like that, look like on that one, there you go. And then we have a vertical compression, okay? Now what if I copied all of those? Let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna control C, because we're gonna play with it a little bit. And I came down here and I put control V and then I put a negative. Okay, then I put control V again and I put a negative two. And then I do control V again and I put a negative 0.5. It's kind of cool looking, don't you think? So these three obviously are neg with negative A and these three are with positive A. And you can make some pretty cool diagrams with the graph. Now, as to domain and range, domain on this and range of the parent function, so let's go mute these again. Your domain of the parent function is x is all real numbers. So we go from negative infinity to zero to positive infinity. So all real numbers for uh, the domain. For the range, it's going to be y is greater than or equal to zero because our a is a positive one and it's opening upward to towards positive infinity. And that's how you would talk about the domain and range of the absolute values. So let me go ahead and actually put that in here just so we have it. Okay, so domain is all real numbers. Okay, and range, y is greater than, let's see if you'll let me type that, greater than or equal to infinity. Wait, the zero, <laughs> I wish I was gonna do infinity and beyond, but I'm thinking wrong, okay. And that gives you the information for all of absolute value. Let's move on to the last one. So this is our final function, exponential parent function. And you'll see up here, this is the parent function y equals b to the x. Notice that the x, our variable, is actually in the exponent talking about exponential functions. We have, a, we have four sliders here. We have a, b, and a we've talked about, which determines vertical uh, stretches and compressions. b we'll talk about in just a moment. At H is our horizontal and K is our vertical. Now on the B, that is a number you have to know. That is a number that you have to have in order to do it. So if my B, and we're just gonna, we're gonna eventually stick at two, but if my B is greater than one, you'll see what happens. I have exponential growth. This is the curve for exponential growth. If I have B where it is in between zero and not zero, but 
a fraction up to the value of one, not one, but up to the value of one, we have exponential decay, okay? So we're gonna set this value. It even says in the CPM book that the value will be set by the teacher. So we're just gonna have it be two, okay? We're gonna leave that alone at two. But then we're gonna play around with the, the A, the H, and the K. So an A again, greater than one, vertical stretch. Less than one, it's a fraction, vertical compression, okay? And so we're gonna leave that at one as well. Okay, horizontal movement. We go to the right, it's positive. We go to the left, it's negative. But again, we have to think opposite when we're looking at the equation, okay? So then we're gonna stop that at zero. Vertical, it goes up. When y goes up, or the vertical shift I mean goes up, and then it goes lower when we go below uh, when we do a negative shift. Okay, I keep doing that. All right, here we go. Let's get that back to one or zero, I should say. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and mute this one because you only need to see the parent function. And we're going to see what happens with each of these equations as we hit them. So this one, if you see what happens, that's a shift of two to the right. Okay, this one will be a shift of two to the left. And let's change the color so it's easier to tell. Okay, so you've got a shift to the right, a shift to the left. Okay, now we're gonna get rid of those for a moment. I won't play with the artistic side of it today or right now. Okay, now we're doing vertical shifts. So this will be a shift up and this will be a shift down. And so you can see this is where our beginning one is. This is our shift up, this is our shift down, okay? Then we're gonna do, we're gonna add the A to the equation that's different. So we're gonna have a vertical stretch with the shift to the right I mean, yes, shift to the right and up, down. So there we go. We have vertical stretch, and then this is a vertical compression, okay? Moving down and down two and to the right two. Okay, so that kind of summarizes all of that. Now let's go back to the parent function. Let's talk really quickly about the domain and the range. The domain means that we can't have is it, the x is going to be greater than zero, okay? It's not going to be, I'm sorry. The domain is all real numbers except for zero. No, that's wrong too. The domain is all real numbers, okay? The range in the case of this one is everything is greater than zero. So all y values are greater than zero. So that should help you with the last functions, domain and range. So domain, let's put that in here. Domain, all real numbers. Okay, and then range, y is greater than greater than, not greater than or equal to, greater than zero. Okay, and that is for the parent function. All right, that ends our discussion on these five functions. We'll have one more problem where we talk a little bit about the quadratic, but let's go ahead and jump off this and jump into that one. So I previously spoke today on the five other parent functions that we were asked to investigate, and now we come back to the quadratic and look at the graphing form of that. And then what I'm gonna do down here is compare it just by, without any translations, without A being greater than one or a fraction, we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna type the equation in for the parent function. And if you notice here, if I mute this, these are the same, okay? And so let's just, let's just summarize what A does first and I will leave the parent function there so you'll see the changes in the purple. Now, if I go greater, then we have a vertical stretch. If I go between zero and one, we have a vertical compression. I went too far, okay. If I go into the negatives, I still have a vertical compression, but now it's negative. And then let's take it to one. So that's just a, a, a reflection of the parent function. And then we can go and it'll be a vertical 
stretch if it's greater than the absolute value of one, okay? So let's take that back to one, and then we'll work and look one more time at the vertical and the horizontal changes. If I can get it to one, there we go. Okay, I probably could have just stopped it and typed it. All right, horizontally, if it's greater than zero, it's going to move to the right, if your X is. If it is less than zero, it's gonna to move to the left, okay? We'll put that back on zero. If I can, I keep trying, I'm the master at that. Okay, then we have our vertical. Our vertical goes up and the vertical comes down. Okay, and that's, if it's negative, it's gonna go, it's gonna move down. And if it's positive, it's going to move up. So, okay. So just to summarize too, I'm gonna to put in another equation. I'm gonna put in one with a vertical stretch. So we're gonna say two. And then we're gonna put in a movement of four to the left, so that means x plus four, because we have to think opposite of where it's gonna go. Then I'm gonna do a vertical shift down to. Okay, so that is what it looks like when you take the parent function, do a vertical stretch, move it over four to the left, and two down, okay? Let's do another one with a vertical compression, and we'll go the opposite direction. So y equals, and I'm just gonna say 0.5, then x, and then we're gonna go three to the right. Okay, and then we'll go up two. Okay, so vertical compression moves three to the right and up two, and then you have a variety of them. So hopefully you're getting this whole idea of the vertex form, which is also the graphing form of the equation to help you with quadratics. And then if you want to, you can go back and look at the other parent functions of the other five that we were looking at to find out, again, what those graphing forms look like. And I will have a summary sheet at the very end uh, to put them all together for you. Okay, we are done with this particular problem. Okay, so this is going to pretty much summarize all of the equations that we've come up with on the five different functions, actually six different functions if you count the quadratic that we have looked at in this particular lesson through the eyes of a Desmos app. So I have on the left side, I have all of the, the uh, parent functions we worked with. And then on the right side, I have all of the graphing forms of the equations. Now, a lot of times if you look up what the graphing form of an equation is, they may not have A there, but part of what was important in this lesson was talking about vertical stretches and compressions, and you need to know what A is in order for that to happen. A lot of times A is just one, so there's no vertical stretch or compression when you're looking at translations, but it's helpful to have it there. If it's one, it doesn't do much other than uh, the parent function gets changed only if there's a horizontal or a vertical translation. So hopefully you like this little background too. I just think it's kind of cool. It's, it's kind of like my ADD's kicking in and I'm liking that, so it's like a squirrel moment for me. But anyway, um, I hope this helps and this will wrap up lesson 2.1.5, or is it, no, 2.2.1. Oh my goodness, all these numbers. Anyway, um, if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and you'll get all of the future videos, but also make sure you give us a thumbs up and that also helps with other people knowing whether or not to look at this video. Um, and then if you have any questions about the math, please leave them in the comments section and I will get back to you. So thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video.